got paid congratulations time to buy those brand new shoes a ps5 go to restaurants and plan the fantastic holiday you always wanted to have and where did the money go the difference between wondering where the money went and deciding where the money should be going comes down to a few easy steps my name is Joran from Economia welcome back to the channel and today we're gonna go through an eight step ritual to do when you're getting paid it's gonna make managing your money so much easier and part of it is gonna even be on autopilot sounds interesting let's get started with step number one the first step is understanding what is your baseline which is basically everything you need to live every month you need food and water to survive you need the roof above your head you need to be able to pay your utility bills your phone bill you need to be able to move around whether it's for seeing your friends or family or just go to work you need to be able to be reachable on the phone maybe use a bit of internet so you can watch this channel and other things as well as paying for your clothes paying for your bet and maybe a little bit of entertainment right you know what that is right most people don't and that's why 61 percent of americans end up living paycheck to paycheck and don't have enough money to make hands meet at the end of the month or just save a little bit and the reason for that is that most people are doing what's called mental accounting which is basically an approximation of knowing what you need every month and what happens is you either undercount or overcount some part or forget some and at the end of the month you don't have enough money left the best way to avoid getting in this kind of trouble is actually to visualize it to write it down there's a word for that but that's a swear word that's a word a lot of people are afraid of you know what that word is budgets it's actually quite easy we are talking about grocery lodging utilities healthcare and insurance transportation debt repayment and a tiny bit of entertainment we are talking about your netflix your internet these kind of things and also a little bit of the extras as well for life then you're gonna add all the three months for each of the categories you're gonna have a total you divide it by three and you have an average for one month and you know what you're having how do you know if you're overspending or not generally the accepted percentage is 30 percent or less for your lodging your grocery and basic necessities should be an additional 10 percent and after utilities and insurance should be another 10 percent so all in all this should be 50 percent of your income so you look at it if you're under 50 percent perfect if you have over 50 percent then you have to look at ways to reduce it maybe your mobile phone plan is a bit too large and you don't need that much data maybe the apartment you're living in and you're renting is a bit too large for you and you're not able to afford that too much so maybe you should downsize for grocery for example are you buying your groceries in a reasonably priced supermarket i know all the groceries are super expensive all across the world because of inflation but are there places you can go to buy good quality food that's a little bit less expensive to making sure that you are under those 50 percent or equal to 50 percent that's going to be very important for what follows according to the feed 37 percent of americans do not have enough money on the side to afford to pay for a 400 dollar emergency other sources are telling us that it's a thousand dollars that's a problem either way that's not much money this is your car breaking down and that's a little breakdown that is a small health care emergency or any kind of little thing around your house that breaks down and all of a sudden if you don't have that money on the side what happens is that you need to borrow money you need to go into debt just because you did not have that money to be able to pay for those little unforeseen things that's the money you need for an emergency so it's called an emergency fund and that's our step number two how do you go about creating this emergency fund and putting money on the side the good thing is in step number one we calculated our baseline for every month so you start with that then you look at how many months of emergency you need on the side people say three to six months others like Sus Orman are telling us six to eight months on the side and when you're thinking about it if you have a family 
if you have a mortgage or if you're working on your own, you are self-employed, six to eight months is not a bad idea at all. So you take back what we were seeing in step one, your one month, and you multiply it by eight, and you have your total. Let's say your baseline is $2,000 a month. Multiply by eight is $16,000. So you know that you need to put aside $16,000 to have an eight month emergency fund. And to make this happen, it's relatively simple. Once you have the money on the side for your baseline, you take 10 to 15% of your paycheck every month and you transfer this money on a specific savings account that's gonna be just for your emergency fund. And you do that every single month up until you reach your objective of your emergency fund. And you forget it until you have an emergency. I hope you forget it forever, but just in case you need it, it's there and you're ready for any emergencies. Oh, before I forget, if you've liked the content so far, please, would you mind give it a like and maybe subscribe so you can see more videos. That would help us a lot. Tell me that you actually enjoy this content and it's gonna help this video be seen by more people. Would really, really appreciate it. And if you want to drop a comment down below to tell me that you've seen it so far, that would be great. Thank you, really appreciate it. Let's go to the next step. 77% of American households and up to 56% of Japanese households have debt. Most of the time, it's the mortgage, which is completely fine. But a lot of this debt goes over 10% interest rate. And this is very expensive. And this prevents you from putting money aside as a safety cushion like we just saw, and also investing in your future. That's why it's so important to tackle it, reduce it, and completely eliminate it as fast as possible to give you peace of mind and some financial stability. What kind of debt are we talking about? We're talking about credit card debt, consumer loan, auto loan, student loan. That being said, student loan, it's a very political subject. It can be, at least in the US, it can be forgiven. So I'm not gonna go into the debate. We're gonna put that on the side, the student loan, and concentrate on all the other ones because they are really, really expensive. Let's take, for example, credit card debt in the US the average interest rate in April 2024 for a credit card is 24.37% a year. This is so expensive. Let's say you have $5,000 of credit card debt and you take one year to repay it. You're gonna end up paying $6,218, meaning that you've paid $1,218 just in interest rate, just because you took on debt because you spent money you did not have. So that's why it's so important to tackle that debt. How you tackle that debt, you have two main ways to tackle the debt. The first one is called the snowball method. The snowball method basically is telling you to take all of your debt, you stack up from the one with the smallest debt amount in US dollars or whatever your currency is to the highest one. And every month you're gonna pay the minimum for all the debts because you don't want to be behind every extra money you have. You put it on the one that's on the top of your list until it's paid off. Then you go to number two, then you go to number three, all until it's all finished. It is a great way to motivate yourself because you have a lot of big wins at the beginning and you can see immediately the effect. So if you want to be motivated all the time, this is a great way to getting started. And that's actually a one that Dave Ramsey is recommending in his seven baby step millionaire uh, approach. Now, there's another one called the avalanche method, which goes a different one. The avalanche method is also stacking all your debt, but the one on top is the one with the highest interest rate. And you tackle that one first. So again, you give the minimum every month not to be behind and every extra money goes to the one with the highest interest rate because that's the one that's actually costing you the most in interest rate. This is mathematically and financially the best one because you reduce your amount of interest that you are paying. So it actually makes more sense, but it takes longer. So depending on how you feel and what your character is, and we are all different, you can choose the snowball method or the avalanche method. All are good. It's so important that every month, with that extra money, you pay down your debt so you can go past the point where you have this high interest debt that's slowing you down and you can go do something better with your monthly paycheck, investing in your future. And how do you do that? Nothing complicated. 
We just have to follow what very smart investors are telling us like Ryan Buffett, telling us to invest regularly in a low cost broad-based index fund or ETF repetitively and benefit from the law of compounding interest. What the hell am I talking about? Let me give you an example. Let's say you're 25 years old and you're already making the median US income of $57,000 a year. Well done because that's not easy. And you're putting 10% of that towards your retirement every month as it's recommended. So that should be about $5,700 a year or $475 a month towards a broad-based index fund and the stock market is getting you 8 to 10% return per year. You start at 25 and you do that until you retire at 65 which is 40 years of investing and at the end you end up with $1.5 million to your name and all of those $1.5 million come from company interest not from all the money you put but from the money that's progressively giving you more and more and more return. That's the compounding interest. What's really interesting is that if you didn't start it at 25 but you started at 35, 10 years later, you would end up with a lot less money. That's the power of compounding interest and that's why you should start investing, not today, yesterday or the earliest possible you can. So how do you get started? In most countries, you're gonna have this type of retirement account that are linked to your employers for the US is the FAME 401k, for Japan is gonna be the defined contribution plan, work pensions, CPF in Singapore, you name it, they are everywhere. Most of the time what they do is that you're taking part of your salary that is directly invested in those plans, you never see it coming, and you decide how much it is, there's a maximum amount that you can contribute and you can have matching contribution from your employers, depending on where you live, of one to one, which is free money, which is fantastic. There's a lot of very good tax advantages to it that are different from country to country. So I highly recommend for you to doing that in this step. And once you have contributed the maximum amount to your 401k or equivalent, you may still have some money on the side that you want to invest. That's where the tax advantages accounts or stock brokerage account come into play. In the US, this is the IRA, Ross IRA or HSA. In Japan, it's gonna be the NISA. In England, it's gonna be the ISA. And basically, although the money you're putting is pre-tax, all the money you put inside, all the capital gain, all the dividend you have are tax-free and you can usually withdraw it tax-free as well at a certain age. It depends depending on where you live, but so I highly recommend you, you check the details, but that's a great way to continue putting money on the side regularly. We've been through five steps already doing a great job and maybe you still have some extra money you want to invest. So that's the time to explore a wider array of investment. We are talking about the regular taxable brokerage account, but at that point, I'm not sure it makes a lot of sense because you already have two accounts that are already investing. Do you really want to be paying more taxes on those? It's up to you, think about it. There can be other things like cryptocurrencies, commodities, lad gold, or it can be a real estate. Why not? If you want to learn about real estate, there can be a lot of advantages. It takes more time to understand them if you're interested in real estate, for example, of cryptocurrency, we've had some videos on the channel, don't hesitate to check them. All these steps might feel a little bit overwhelming, time consuming, and actually, when you think about it, you might forget some of them. And it's the same for me, to be very honest. So that's why I like to automate everything, put a lot on autopilot so I don't have to worry about it. And what I propose is to tell you how I'm doing it. Whoa, didn't come out well. I'm gonna give you my tips and my advice on how I'm doing it so maybe you can learn from it. For example, your utilities should be paid automatically, deducted from your bank account so you don't have to worry about it, you never forget about it, and your mobile phone should be the same as well. If we go to uh, another step, for example, for your Emergency fund, you just have an automatic bank transfer on the day you are paid up to the time that your emergency fund is completely funded. Same for your debt, it should be automatically deducted from your bank account every month. We look at the 401k equivalent, so this one is deducted directly from your salary before you even receive this salary, so that one is good. For the other ones, the 
IRA, Roth IRA, ISA in UK or NISA in Japan. This one you can use your stockbroker and do automatic investment on a monthly basis. You choose the amount, you choose what kind of fund you want to buy and you just put it on autopilot and you check it every six months or every year. You don't have to check it all the time. The more automation you put, the less you're gonna forget, the more relaxing it's gonna be and that's gonna be a good habit for you to manage your money every single month when your paycheck hits your bank account. Now that your finances are in order and autopilot, you will have extra time on your hand and extra peace of mind as well. What are you gonna do with all that time? That's the best time to start investing in yourself and that's our step number eight. For example, you can learn a new skill so you can find a new job, a better paying job or a completely different job in a different field because you prefer that field and the one you're working in actually doesn't interest you so much anymore. Maybe you want to learn about real estate investing or maybe you want to start a side also like, I don't know, a YouTube channel maybe? Or you have a childhood passion, sports, music, you have plenty of time to doing it and if you have kids, I'm sure you are short on time. So now you made some more time for them and that's really the most important. And that's the reward for taking the first seven steps of really knowing how to manage your paycheck every month and stabilizing your finances. That's it. That's our eight step ritual to do when you're getting paid. That doesn't mean that you can't go out with friends and enjoy yourself once in a while, but you have to make sure that your bases are covered. You are investing in your future before spending on non-essentials. If you're interested in learning more about how to invest and manage your finances, you can check this video or that video. And if you like this comment, please give it a like. Do not hesitate to subscribe for more contents to come. And if you have anything to share, please leave a comment down below. Thank you again for watching and until next time, goodbye.